fam, Batman here. Welcome to another episode of Custom Card Weekly, where I challenge you to design a custom Shadowverse card based on a specific theme. I probably should not carry on doing this voice if I want to keep my voice to next week. Uh, last week, I asked you to design a card based on your favorite superhero or supervillain, I suppose. Let's see what you came up with. And uh, I just want to say before we start that Snap Camera is a blessing. This is one of the cooler filters on there. Freaking Armored Batman, are you kidding me? First up is a card by Drenzen Ant-Man for Forest Craft. 4 play point one one ambush at the end of your turn. If you played four or more cards this turn, evolve this follower. And the evolve stat line is 5-5. Five, five. Makes a lot of sense with that man you know, he starts small, can't see him. Then he grows into Giant Man and he messes you up. I'm not sure why he keeps Ambush as Giant Man, but I guess that's because of the surprise factor uh, that Ant Man grows into Giant Man. I dig it. Drenzen also designed Thanos, Hero at Heart, for Dragoncraft. Uh, I suppose a, a big neutral follower would be for Dragoncraft anyway, so I appreciate just cutting to the chase and making it a Dragoncraft card in the first place. 10.015, Fanfare Summon and Infinity Gauntlet. Last words destroy all allied Infinity Gauntlets. Evolve cannot be destroyed by spells and effects. Okay. And Infinity Gauntlet, at the end of your turn, randomly perform one of the following. Take an extra turn and deal 4 damage to your leader. Banish all fo enemy followers. Take control of a random enemy follower. Deal 5 damage to all enemies. Put the enemy leader's defense to 1. Destroy half of each player's remaining deck. Well, this just seems absolutely ridiculous. Uh, not only because this card is insane, but also because Thanos is clearly... Not a hero. He performed, like, universal genocide. That's not okay. That's not okay. He's called Thanos the Mad Titan for a reason. What are you talking about? Bendy over here with a freaking Judge Dredd card. Judge Dredd's your favorite hero? A man of culture, finally. Neutral gold, 4.44 ward. Until the end of the opponent's turn, any cards that would be put into the opponent's hand by another card's effect are discarded instead. That's cool. You know, no illegal possession of anything, all right? You draw cards and you're meant to draw cards in no time else. Evolve, choose, put a light sentence or a fist of dread into your hand. Fist of... <laughs> oh, that's good. Destroy an enemy follower that attacked last turn. Light sentence, change an enemy follower's attack to one. Give that follower the following effect. Can't attack. Wow, these are really good cards, too. And this kind of fits with CCW Xmas, in a way. So, double submission. Props. Card seems really strong. Really flavorful, though. Miles can go invisible, but can't always do it on command. I like that. I get that reference. Guys, well, go watch Spider-Verse if you haven't already, by the way. The movie's amazing. Uh, ambush. Evolve. Give your leader the following effect. At the end of your turn, if you control no followers, your opponent can attack. Comma, maybe. <laughs> your leader can't be attacked until your next turn. This effect can't be used two turns in a row. It's not stackable and lasts the rest of the match. Uh, yeah, pretty interesting effect. So you need to have a bunch of ambush stuff or cards like Forte, then you have a defensive proc on your leader, and you can't get hit for a turn, which is kind of nice. Also, ah, uh, might be might be really good in like aggro dragon, right? Like you play Miles on 5, you evolve it, and then you just play your Fortes out over time, can't get hit while you hit them, and then you win. So that might be a little annoying. I do like that the thematics of it, in that... It doesn't proc all the time, and I actually like the design of that better in general, where you have to do something to get the leader effect to work. Like, as much as people complain about Mirabane, at least you have to build your deck around it and do something to get it to proc, right? Um, but I dig that. Halcyon 98 with Bane, Vengeful Revenant, 8.610 for blood. Bane, of course. Rush, Clash, destroy all forest bats, gain plus two, plus four, and deal four damage to the enemy leader for each forest bat destroyed. Wow! That seems... Crazy. I like that it de destroys forest bats. That's very thematic. I appreciate that. Last word, summon an Endless Pursuit. Endless Pursuit, count on three at the end of your opponent's turn. Summon a forest bat and give it Bane. Last word, summon a Bane. Vengeful. Vengeful? Vengeful Revenant. Seems like it's a lot of value in one card. This seems really strong. Probably, probably too strong given Bane's relative power level in the DC universe. But I do like the theme of it, especially it destroying forest bats. That's... That's way too good. Jeremy Aya with exactly what it says on the tin. 
Oh, God damn it. <laughs> oh, I should have known this would happen. Oh, boy. Daniel Lim with another drawing. Pro tip, guys. If you want to get into CCW, draw, draw the card. Uh, now I'm going to get like a bunch of troll drawings. That, that's fine. Anyway, Swamp Thing, Green Protector, Forest Craft, 6.26. Ward, Fanfare, give your leader the following effect. Whenever an allied follower or Forest Craft follower is destroyed, give all enemy followers minus one attack. This effect lasts for the rest of the match. I dig it. Also, your favorite hero is Swamp Thing. Mad props. You guys have really good taste. I'm not going to lie, I wasn't really expecting that, but I'm pleasantly surprised. The thematics here are good too, and it's a pretty solid card. A big ward body, because it is the protector of the green, of course. And the fact that whenever, you know, an ally of the green, forest craft followers in this case, are destroyed, he gets mad and makes you weaker. Could be like an entangling vines kind of situation is what I'm imagining. I love it. Still no color, that's fine. Don't apologize for that. But, uh, man, if you do ever get color back and you can start coloring your pieces, that'd be... It's already incredible, it'd be even more incredible. James Heller, second prototype from DFD Dude. Uh, not sure if the character from Prototype 2 counts as a superhero, but you know what, I'll allow it, it's fine. 7.44 fanfare, destroy an allied follower, then gain all effects, excluding evolve effects the destroyed follower had. If the destroyed follower had a fanfare, excluding targeted effects, trigger it. Evolve, gain all effects, excluding evolve effects from the last enemy follower that this follower attacked and destroyed. That effect's actually really cool. I, I love cards that where you can steal your opponent's stuff. Um, like, that's why I like Octris. That's why I like Morton. Probably it's just the Hearthstone player in me. I used to play Priest a lot back in the day when Mind Control cost 8 mana. Um, but I just love the shenanigans like that. And this card is pretty neat. Only problem is that I think it's really, really bad tempo for the stats. Like, it's 7 play point four four, And you're destroying an allied follower in the process as well. So it's not great on that front, so not sure if it's actually playable, but the effect is cool. A man's Odin Prince with the Sphinx, 9.66 Forest Craft Legendary Ward. Give your leader the following effect. Whenever an enemy follower attacks your leader, half its attack rounded down. Not sackable and lasts for the rest of the match. Enemy followers can't attack next turn, half their attack. Uh, I mean, other than grammar and keyword and capitalization qualms. I think the effect is pretty neat. The controlling card, uh, unkilling support, you called it, which totally works. Like, you play the Sphinx, then you can play Azudia. And, of course, the Sphinx, one of the heroes from Ben Stiller's classic movie, The Mystery Men. But your favorite hero is the Sphinx and not the Shoveler? What is wrong with you? Giving a forgotten hero some respect by my name isn't actually Ken Roche. Ice Scream, 4 play point one one, neutral. <laughs> what is this? What is this thing? I've never seen this in my life. Is his power to turn into ice cream? Is he an X-Men? What is, he's an X-Men villain? How is this, what is this? Isn't there a guy in X-Men whose power is to turn into a puddle? No, wait, that's from Sky High. Holy smokes. That was from a, a, a superhero parody movie and it's an actual thing apparently god comics comics are freaking wild <laughs> spirit 13 had to do my girl gwen justice also look out here comes a spider-man all right gwen stacy 3.31 neutral legendary if you have at least five play points choose summon either a Gwen spider gwen or a gwen pool last words summon a spider-man from your deck gwen pool 5.53 rush <laughs> exclamation mark okay Fanfare, hey buddy, choose attack or defense, banish a random enemy follower with the highest X, X was your choice, clash, deal one damage to random enemy follower, then keep doing it up to my attack value, last word, summon me, thought you'd seen the last of me, huh, evolve, hey remember the follower I banished, summon them, I do all the same stuff I do when I'm not evolved, you know the drill by now, I, I dig this, because Gwenful is known for breaking the fourth wall, that's her whole shtick, that's cool, so... Fun stuff like this, I <laughs> I wish this was a thing, man. Like, if this is a card in Shanniverse, this would definitely be the way that the description is worded. Spider-Gwen, also 5.53. I like that you got Spider-Man's crotch in the art as well. Good shot. Rush, fanfare, select an enemy follower. 
cannot attack until the turn after this follower leaves play. Lower the enemy follower's attack to one on clash. That's cool. Like, it's using the webbing to immobilize it. This follower can attack every enemy follower in play. What does that mean? Lower the enemy follower's attack to zero? That's the same as this one. What does this mean, though? Oh, I guess, like, if it can't be attacked, or if it's an ambush, it can attack it. That's kind of cool. Like a spider sense kind of situation. Situation. And Spider-Man, 5.53, rush. When this follower comes into play, a random enemy follower cannot attack until the turn after this follower leaves play. That's pretty neat, actually. So, he is super immobilized with the webbing. This is definitely what that is. Clash, if the enemy follower's defense is lower than this follower's attack, send it back to the owner's hand. I dig that! I can, like, I can imagine why this is the effect because of Spider-Man's power set. Evolve, summon, or an enemy follower from your hand with a defense lower than this follower's attack. I'm not sure what that's about. I guess it's like maybe like the whole mentoring thing with other spider people. Uh, that's cool, though. I dig it. One, one qualm. One important qualm, though. Sorry to inform you. Uh, Gwenpool is not Gwen Stacy at all, actually. Gwenpool is an entirely separate character named Gwen Pool with an E. There was even a joke in the comics about that where Gwenpool had to fight Deadpool and Deadpool roasted Gwenpool by saying that everyone thinks she's a Gwen Stacy spinoff when she's actually a completely separate character entirely. At least the last time I checked in comics, maybe they changed that. But yeah, Gwen Stacy, Gwenpool, completely separate characters. So basically everything is falling apart around this card. Card correction. Matt, test your favorite hero is the Phantom? I mean, I'm not throwing any shade or anything. Respect, dude. That's an that's a old-school pick. I just didn't think that anybody under, like, 50 years old would have the Phantom as their favorite superhero. This is unexpected. Forcecraft, 5.22. If this follower is destroyed, banished, or transformed, summon a the Phantom. Reduce a random enemy follower's attack to zero until the end of the turn whenever three other cards are played during your turn. If this follower is destroyed, banished, or transformed, summon an unevolved the Phantom. Reduce all enemy followers attack to zero until the end of your turn, until the end of your opponent's turn, rather, whenever three other cards are played during your turn. Makes sense to be in Fortis Craft, because it does have this unkilling effect. Doesn't gain stats on Evolve because of this additional all enemy followers versus a random enemy follower, which makes this a pretty annoying card if you can combo it well on, like, turn six, seven, eight-ish, uh, with, you know, Fairy Wisp or what have you. Probably more likely on turn seven or eight. Um, Really bad stat line for the cost, though, but it has this basically more powerful Mordecai effect just not leaving ever uh, unless you bounce it back into your hand, which is nicer for this craft, I suppose. Uh, can pose board space issues, though, sometimes if you're playing it unlimited and you're playing Roach or whatever. But uh, this does seem like mostly just unkilling support because of the whole zero attack thing works with Mark of the Unkilling. Just don't think it's high tempo enough. Um, on the board on turn five, especially since it doesn't gain a stats on an evolve turn uh, to see play. But still, I'm really just mostly amazed about what hero is being represented here. Like when I put out the call for the CCW Super, I, you know, I expected a bunch of Iron Mans, Thors, Batmans, but the Phantom. It's a, it's a pleasant surprise. Ali Moose made cards for essentially the entire Justice League from the Justice League and Justice League Unlimited shows. Do not have time in this video to look through them all in depth, but that is really sweet. One for each class, basically, hey? That's cool. If you want to look through them, or, or any of the other ones, hashtag CCW Super. Appreciate the effort. From Necrophony, before I forget, here's my entry. Thank you very much for running such a fun event. I watch the videos every time and they cheer me up. Aww. Now I feel bad for being late all the time. <laughs> Ivy the Devourer, 3.33 fanfare, put a Harley the Destroyer into your hand if there isn't one already in your hand or in play. Evolve the Swallower whenever an allied ha 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 can't speak anymore. Harley the Destroyer comes into play. Storm Drain, at the end of your turn, return this card to your deck. Weird that it's in Bloodcraft and not Forestcraft, but I kind of get either way. And Harley Destroyer, Shadowcraft, of course, 4.24 fanfare, put Ivy in your hand if there isn't one already in your hand or in play. Evolve the Swallower whenever an allied Ivy the Devourer comes into play. 
Ward cannot be targeted by enemy spells and effects. If banished or destroyed, return this card to your deck instead. You do not gain a shadow. Interesting. I like this. So this one has a kind of permanence to it, which makes sense, given that Harley is in freaking every comic event ever, even ones where she has, like, no place being in them <laughs> because of how popular she is. But that's fine, I guess. And Ivy with the Storm Drain and returning to your deck as well. Because villains keep coming back. I guess it's like they keep breaking out of Arkham, right? That, that's how it works. That's kind of fun. Uh, and I do appreciate that this duo of cards appreciates the relationship between Ivy and Harley, which um, I think a lot of people aren't really aware of, uh, outside of comic book readers, of course. So, cool. I enjoyed the dynamics there. Larry I. Marge, may I present... Oh my goodness. I mean, this is bound to happen, right? <laughs> there was going to be a one-punch ran submission like this. I mean, the, uh, the crossover with Shadowverse is coming up, so, you know, very timely for a submission like this. I'm not going to read it, though. If you want to read it, feel free. Pause the screen. I won't stop you. Finally, we got Ixalea, The Flash, 2.21 Storm. Banish this follower and put a copy of The Flash into your deck when at least play or when your turn ends. I like that. That's like, makes it not overpowered. I saw 2.21 Storm and I'm like, oh boy, here we go. Well, this actually makes sense. And it's cool because, like, in Injustice, his finishing move is the uh, running around the world and punching you as he runs around the world move. I don't know if there's a name for that, but that's what it is. And this reminds me of that, right? Like, you storm, you go away. You come back, you storm them again. Makes sense. And there you have it. That's it for this week's episode of CCW Custom Card Weekly. Thank you all for submitting. Really appreciate it. And uh, if you'd like to see all the submissions again, it's at hashtag CCW Super on Twitter. But enough of that. It's time for next week's challenge, which is CCW Zodiac. That's right. Chinese New Year is coming up real soon, but... For the sake of this, I'll open it up to Shadowverse cards based on either Chinese Zodiac or the other Zodiac. Up to you. Uh, tweet at me, at IgnidiusLP, with hashtag CCWZodiac with your card submission. And you could get in on next week's action. Thank you so much for watching. Like the video if you did. Don't if you didn't. Subscribe for more Shadowverse content in the very near future. And of course, thank you to my wonderful patrons, patreon.com slash Ignidius, if you'd like to support the channel as well. I'd highly appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.